Hey, everybody. Welcome back to our podcast where we agree to disagree on a lot of different things. Today's topic, body image, which is interesting because we talked about diet culture on the podcast a few weeks ago, and we touched on body image a little bit, but the feedback was really good, so we wanted to take a whole episode to kind of dive into just body image specifically. Well, and I like this topic because I feel like, especially as women, we have a lot of insecurities about our bodies, and I think it's okay sometimes to get down on ourselves a little bit, but we also should be thinking that we look great just the way we are. So I'm excited to talk about this because I feel like I've had some feelings about it, especially being an athlete and a gymnast. And so anyway, before I tell you all my little stories, let's just get right into it. So you growing up, what affected your views on like body image and food more? Was it like your family, the environment you grew up in, or was it gymnastics? Obviously gymnastics had some effect. I mean, gymnastics definitely, but I mean, especially being at a young age, I didn't really know, you know, about Mm -hmm. like what my body should look like. I feel like. When do do you think you, when do you think you first, when you, when you first started thinking about it, like. I think, I think definitely more when I was in high school is when it really hit me. That's good. That's healthy. But but I, because I mean, at such a young age, like being a gymnast, we're just like super fit when we're little too, because like we haven't gone through puberty yet. So like, I remember like even just in high school, like, yeah, I was still muscly, but like, I just feel like I didn't have as like my, my defined abs like I kind of used to, you know, like, (laughs) Mm -hmm. you know, I hit puberty in high school and it was just like, I mean, I still had them, but you know, your body's just going through a lot, but I mean, I, I've always, I was always really fit. Um, and I know in gymnastics, there was always like, you know, being skinny and being bigger and you didn't want to be bigger, but then it's like, it's crazy now because even though like as a gymnast, you might say that girl's skinny and that girl's bigger, which honestly it shouldn't matter. But it's like, if that girl is her size and she can do gymnastics like that, like who cares, you know? So like, it's just so crazy to me that it was always a thing and that it was always like that. I mean, I, I get it because, you know, it's probably lighter on your body and easier to do flips and tricks when you're more in shape and healthy, but there's also girls where their builds just bigger, you know, so that's just how they are. And so if they can do it, like, then I think it's fine. But, um, I don't know. I mean, my family was always like really good about it. I mean, we always, I mean, I grew up eating, junk food you know (laughs) like Jonas didn't grow up eating junk food we grew up eating all the sugar cereals all the snacks my mom did make really good homemade cooked meals though like we did have good food um on the table but you know we also had some room for dessert and this like I feel like as a gymnast if you're a gymnast you know like sugar cereals like your go-to meal like I would just want to eat it for breakfast lunch and dinner like I feel like cereal is such a gymnast thing but I don't know where I'm going with this, but anyway, (laughs) anyway, I feel like gymnastics definitely was more what made me want to like be more in shape. But honestly, like, like I've said, I've never really had to worry about it because I was always lean and that's just like my body type. Like I never had to like stress about it. There was times when I was at camp where, you know, Marta would be like, oh, she's looking skinnier. Or one time I got really bloated because I was on my period And I was just like, it was a really bad one. And we were at camp and I was on beam and Marta, like, I'm, I'm totally not going to say this right, but Marta had gone up to my coach and basically said like, why is Mikaela look so fat? You know, like, why is her stomach Mm -hmm. sticking out? And, you know, Lisa's like, she's on her period, just chill. Like she's fine, you know? And so it's just like stupid things like that. Like, well, who cares if my stomach was sticking out a little bit that day? Like it just shouldn't matter. So there was times where I heard stuff like that, but at the same time, I just like, it never really affected me. Like I know a lot of girls have eating disorders, but I just like never let, I don't know. I think maybe just growing up eating junk food, it just like never dawned on me. Like my parents weren't like, Oh, you got to be super healthy and this, 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 and this, you know? And I feel like sometimes like the way your family eats can maybe trigger something too. I don't know, but, um, It was just kind of like, you can eat whatever you want. I'm not going to punish you because you're a high-level athlete. You know, obviously, Mm -hmm. I wish I would have thought of it more carefully because I noticed by going gluten-free, coming back for the Olympics for that year, I was like, oh, wow, I actually have energy. I can, I I can, Mm -hmm. 
actually not have to take a nap every five minutes and not feel tired. I could like get through a workout and come home and go to bed. So I didn't really learn that till later in life, but it was, it was funny because when we'd go to training camps, I feel like I've mentioned this before. I don't know, but I was the girl that always had all the snacks because my coach never checked my bag. A lot of the coaches would check the girls' suitcases for food. And then usually when you would fly in, we would we were able to go into a grocery store and get some things like waters. I'd get like some fruit cups, a little bit of things. But I'd usually bring most of my snacks like from home and put them in my suitcase. And all the time girls would be coming over to my room because they'd be like, oh, you got the chocolate and you got all this stuff. Because when we were at camp, we were like working so hard and burning so many calories that like I would crave a little bit of chocolate, you know, because we were so stressed and it was just like, I need a little bit of junk food to survive. And anyway, the girls would always be going to my room asking me for (laughs) food. And I'm like, man, this is so sad that you guys like literally can't have snacks like this. And, And then some of the girls, you know, we just don't have food like this at our home. And I'm like, well, that's awful. Yeah, it's sad. You know, so, I mean, but if you're used to that, like, good for you. But anyway. So looking back in your childhood and teen years, was there ever a time when you were insecure about your body? Um, I don't know. It's, like, hard to say because I feel like at one point, like, I always like to say I'm, like, short and stocky and, like, stubby. <laughs> and I feel like... <laughs> I feel like a little bit before like 2016 Olympics, I felt like there's a time where I was a little pudgy, but like I wasn't just to me. I just didn't feel like I was in my best shape. Just, just bigger than normal. Yeah. And then I feel like, like once I went to college, like, cause I started like for 2016 Olympics, I was like, I'm going to do everything I can to make this Olympic team. So like I, I, I started doing, um, an athletic trainer and then I started doing dance classes doing all the things I could so that I was, I was just ready to go working on my flexibility, working on my strength and conditioning. So I feel like that was like the time where I really like got into really good shape, but kind of before that, you know, I wasn't doing all that. And then after that, I like went to college and the training was just so different. Like we did a lot more conditioning. You're not pounding as much on your body. And so I feel like my body just like really got into shape. I don't know. Like, I just felt like I was like, in the best shape ever and it wasn't like I was trying to do that it just my body just kind of built that way and I feel like I was like in good shape ever since then and like going into the 2020 Olympics it was just my body was just like so strong so healthy I feel like you know there was one time too when we were at um we were at national team training camp after COVID and you know a lot of you know, girls couldn't train and I was training the whole summer. So a lot of the girls, you know, got a little heavier than what they were, you know, the year before COVID. And Tom had gone up to Lisa and said, Michaela's looking really skinny. And Lisa was like, Michaela's just been in shape and the other ones aren't in shape like they were like a year ago. So Mm -hmm. Michaela's just stayed in really good shape. And I don't know if it was that I stayed in really good shape. I just think my body, like, I mean, I didn't, I didn't stop training. So my body didn't have time to like not get out of shape. Mm -hmm. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. It's just like. Was was he worried about it? Like he was thinking. No, I think he was fine. He was just like, oh yeah, you're right. Cause a lot of the girls had been injured. A lot of the girls had COVID. So, and it wasn't like, I'm not saying that they were fat. They just like weren't in shape. So like. For me to stand compared to them, I looked really tiny, I think, just because everyone was kind of, like, on that boat. But, like, I was still training during COVID, like, every single day until I hurt my foot and then I had COVID and then got pneumonia. But, I mean, even being sick like that, I was so sick that that probably made me lose weight, you know? I don't know. But, anyway, that, you know, that kind of is hurtful to hear to me, like, being like, oh, she's so skinny. I'm like, this, I literally weigh the same that I did last year, so... Anyway, just things like that sometimes like have an effect to it. Like it, you know, you're like, well, do I have a problem then? Am I, do I look bad? You know? Yeah. So then anyway, I just, I just get to the point where I'm like, I'm just not going to let it bother me. It doesn't matter. Like if I can, if I'm doing my routines and I'm making everything like who cares? I'm like, I don't really care it's if there, healthy. if I had a problem with it, then yes, I'd want my coach to tell me. Cause like, you know, I want to be healthy and I want my gymnastics to look good and be able to like, not hurt myself or get injured, you know, but 
So do you think that in gymnastics specifically, girls are more prone to body image issues? I think so for sure because we're in a tiny little leotard. And, you know, until I feel like more recently it was like you had to be a stick. Like even if like you weren't stick skinny, I feel like Marta was like, nope, you know, didn't want you. So kind of sad. It was like, I was like, if I felt like if you were prone to injuries, weren't in shape, had asthma, it was like Marta just didn't want you, you know, like you're not durable enough. That's too bad. What age did you realize that that was a thing that like your appearance was a part of gymnastics? Was it because of Marta? Was it because of like national team camps and stuff? I mean, I think so. I mean, just, you know, being an athlete and being in a leotard, like I always wanted to look good, you know, like I didn't want, like even having boobs, I'm like, I wouldn't want big boobs because I was always just like, that's just weird when they like stick out of your leotard. Like I feel like everything <laughs> was just supposed to be like flat, you know, and it's like, I mean, obviously it's harder to do gymnastics when, you know, they're flapping around. Like, you know, girls always say my boobs are, they're too big, you know, or have to wear like two sports bras because our leotards are thin. They're not like super supportive. So I was kind of glad I never had that issue, but I don't know. It's just hard because I just feel like I don't really know if I ever noticed that specifically, like if there's a time or a place, I just feel like I always just wanted to look good, I guess. I don't know. So as a woman, if the other women in your life are struggling with their body image, how does that impact you and what advice do you have? I mean, I think it's always sad to see women struggling and getting down on themselves. I mean, I had a friend personally that went through that and sometimes I feel like it was, you know, always hard for her to be around me because it was like, you know, some guys, you know, want that, that perfect skinny little girl and, you know, they didn't always want someone that was a little, you know, bigger and that was just, you know, her body type and it was like, she's a great fun person. Like it shouldn't matter what you look like. I know appear, I know looks have to be some of it, but it honestly like shouldn't matter. It's more about the personality. And if you learn to like their personality, then they can really grow on you. So anyway, it's just like, it was sometimes like really hard to see her go through that and like being around her and her being affected by that. But now she's, you know, turned herself around. She's, you know, lost a lot of weight. She's a lot happier. She's a lot healthier. And it's just really awesome to see her shine and feel really good about her body. And I know for some women, like, if losing weight is going to make you feel better, then, like, go for it. Like, I'm totally there to support you. And if not, like, who cares? Like, you look great the way you are and eat whatever you want. I, now that I've been done with gym, I'm like, life's too short to, like, not enjoy food. Like, I've been trying to eat better <laughs> Um, just cause there was that whole year I didn't work out after the Olympics. I was like, man, I really feel like crap. So like I definitely started working out again and like, even now I still want to eat better. It just hasn't fully happened yet, but I try to, but I'm like, life's just too short not to like enjoy food and enjoy life. You know, like you still got to enjoy it somewhat. So whatever makes you happy, I'm here to support you and whatever decision you make and don't let anybody otherwise tell you that you're not good enough because you are good enough. You're gorgeous. You're beautiful. You just need to accept yourself the way that you are because God made you that way and he loves you every way that you are built. And I don't know, just try to be positive as much as you can. And I don't know. Like I said, life's just too short to care what other people think. Being a public figure, I get hate comments all the time. People will say mean things. Most of the time, it's all positive. It's all supportive. It's all good. But I have had rude comments, and it's just one of those things where I'm like, I don't really care what you have to say. Like, you're just saying those things to make yourself feel better. So just know whenever someone's being rude, it's just that they are trying to make themselves feel better. So anyway, you're beautiful the way you are. Well said. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of things I could touch on that specific topic, but... Anyway, Jonas, do you think body image is something men struggle with as well or no? I mean, yeah, probably not to the same extent. Well, I think it's annoying too because guys, sorry, interrupting you for a second. You're good. Guys, I feel like lose weight so easy too. Like, <laughs> like you guys can just like well, not work out for a couple weeks and then you work out yeah. for a week and like, bam, you got like. I mean, testosterone helps. 
you guys got like nice bods and I'm like what it takes me like a month to like start feeling like I'm getting somewhere well it's also on the flip side though like to have like 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 a like a nice like a good physique like girls don't really have to work out you know like if you if you just eat healthy right and Mm -hmm. you know like that's just your typical like oh you know that girl looks good right like for most people but like for guys i would argue it's harder because you know like the the image of like a good looking guy in shape guy is like someone who's ripped and like that takes a lot of hard work like working out and stuff that's true i can see that i guess well i remember our trainer at the u i was always like how do i get like more my muscles to be more defined and he's like all you have to do is eat healthy if you eat healthy, your muscles will be defined. Like, it doesn't matter how much you work out. If you don't eat healthy, you're not going to have defined muscles. And he's like, and for people that, like, don't work out, yeah, you don't have to work out. Just eat healthy and you'll be fine. So kind of like what you said, like, it makes sense. But it's just hard because I'm like, I don't want to eat healthy. <laughs> but then it's like, I hate working out. But then it's like, well, if I'm going to eat unhealthy, then I need to just work out. And I guess I have to live with that. I don't know. Yeah, so I would definitely say it's, I don't think body image is as much of an issue for men. I think just because just having testosterone or more testosterone and your metabolism is just naturally higher, I think it's just easier. It's just easier to take off weight. Um, For me, I never really had any issues with it. Not really, but it was, I distinctly remember... My junior year of high school, I had broken my leg. It was really bad, and I like, dislocated my knee. I ended up dislocating that knee twice. And I was, you know, that kept me out of sports. Um, it kept me out of sports for a while, like, as I was recovering. But even after, like, it was hard because it, it took a long time for me to be back 100%. And, you know, I was running and doing soccer before, and, like, I dislocated my knee twice, you know, and so I was always worried, like, well, what if my other knee, you know, what if that knee is about to go? Because I had, like, I had just grown a lot that year, and so the doctor said that, you know, I was just a little more unstable, and, like, I had fractured my femur, and, you know, like, when you're playing soccer, like, you need your knees to be strong, right? And so, so there was that, and then also I remember distinctly, like, towards the end of junior year, um, because I hadn't really been able to play sports, and, like, I'd never worked out, but I remember, I remember seeing a picture of myself and cause also I just had a growth spurt. So I was like six, four almost at this point. So end of senior year, I was end of junior year. I was six, four and one sixty five. I remember seeing a picture of myself and I'm like, man, I am really skinny. And I had always been skinny growing up. Mm-hmm. Like that's just my natural body type. I've just always been skinny, but it was, I just remember it was distinctly at that moment. I'm like, that is too skinny. So that was, like, the first time I ever had any sort of, like, body image issue. And is that kind of why you, like, got yourself to working out? Yeah, so so that's... Because you're always skinny. Like, I, you know, like, you never really had to worry about that. Yeah, I was always skinny, and I always ran into soccer, and I was always, you know, like, in shape. I never, like, lifted weights or anything, like, ever. Um, But then it was... I grew, like, three inches that year, and I had to stop playing sports. And so I, you know, I don't know, I just just was way skinnier than normal. Like 6'4", 165 is really skinny. And so it was, I didn't want to be skinny anymore. I just decided. I'm like, yeah, I just I just don't want this to be me. You know, it's, it's been me. I was, what, 16 at the time. So I was just skinny for 16 years. I just didn't want that to be me anymore. And it wasn't like I had a problem with it or I thought it was wrong. I just decided, you know, I'd just, just rather not. You know, I'd rather not be skinny. And then I had to fill the void in my life that was sports with something else because I've always been active and like always needed to do things and couldn't really play sports you know when you're recovering from an injury like that um and it was around the same time that my dad got the gym in our basement Mm -hmm. and so I figured well you know two birds with one stone I'll just I'll just make weightlifting my sport and I'll not be skinny anymore um which like I would I'm probably still considered skinny but I I like dedicated myself that summer to working out I like I read books. I watched like documentaries on like Arnold Schwarzenegger. I like read workout plans and I went from doing like knowing nothing about that world to like, I wasn't, you know, within a few weeks I was an expert. I was counting calories and I was counting my protein and like 
you know, I had these custom built workouts I built for myself. And so I put on 30 pounds that summer. And then when I went back to school, I think I told you this, I'd also grew my hair out. So when I went back to school, some kids didn't <laughs> recognize me because I, I put on 30 pounds and all of a sudden I had long hair. Um, One of my friends I went to high school, my friend Emma that introduced Jonas and I, sorry, I know I interrupted you. No, you're good. <laughs> she would always call Jonas fake bake too because he was always like super tan at school. Oh, yeah. So she said, some people call you fake bake. I don't know. Well, also, well, because I spent kind of funny. that summer, I spent the whole summer working out and doing yard work. So I just got mm-hmm. super tan and put on muscle for the first time in my life. And since then, I've I've maintained it pretty well. It's funny. I, I, I probably I still do look skinny, and you still tell me I have chicken legs. <laughs> but like, it's nothing it's your near. Your legs are just so long. Yeah, I know. I feel like really I tall know. people like like if they ever go to gain weight, they don't real like. I'm short and stocky, so it just doesn't have anywhere to go besides like, <laughs> you know. And then, like, when you're tall, you just have all this room for it to go. So I just think you never, like, notice it. Like, it's annoying. Like, anyway, I also have to say I just said like, but I'm thinking about it now because last podcast, Jonas got mad at me because I was saying like too much. <laughs> well, I just counted and Jonas said it like, like, 12 times really? this whole time he's talked. Dang so it. I don't want to hear you get mad at me anymore for well, saying like. Well, I appreciate anyway, that. Anyway, you're I'll, welcome. I'll pay attention. But I do have to say like. Oh, <laughs> body. See, now it's going to bug you. I know. Body image, though, has been a lot harder being down with the gym. Like, I have I feel like recently, like, when I was talking, it was a lot focused kind of, like, during my gym period, which I feel like didn't affect me that much. But once I was done with gym, I didn't start really noticing it maybe until, like, six months in. Like, it, start, it started to hit me where I was, like... Oh my gosh, like, <laughs> stop looking at me, you can't talk now. Anyway. I'm just going to point at you every time you say like I'm, now. Anyway, I'm, I'm just, I just couldn't believe that my body was like starting to get out of shape. And I'm like, is this really happening to me? Was, yeah, because because you lived your whole life just training. I know, and so I just never f- like worried about it. I mean, my body has, I'm definitely a woman now. Like, I have, you know, hips and I have a butt. And I have stuff up here, you know. It's, well, so it's it was like, it was funny because, and you, you, you definitely you didn't get fat. You didn't get, I don't like no, unhealthy. I but, just, but it's funny because remember we were looking at pictures from that time, and every time <laughs> we I'm can, like, we dang. can tell. It, you know, it, it's not like it's bad, but we can tell. We're like, oh, that's that's when you weren't working out. But then it, it bugs me because. Sometimes like when I started working out again at burn, I was kind of, I was kind of saying to her, I'm like, I just don't feel like myself anymore. Cause obviously as a professional athlete and I was like really ripped and I was in really good shape and I, I didn't really have to like work for it. I mean, I worked hard in the gym every day, so it was like I was working for it, but like I didn't have to like go to the gym and spend my time worrying about going and working out and eating better. Yeah. It was just your job. Yeah. So it was like, it's it's just been like way harder for me and yeah going back and looking at pictures but it really bugged me when like people say you just look a lot healthier now i'm like so what you're saying like <laughs> i was anorexic or like skinny like i think that's just someone's nice way of saying that you've put on healthy weight i know but then it just makes there's, there's but then no i feel like it offends me more like <laughs> cuz they were like <laughs> judging me how i looked before like so the most I ever weighed during gymnastics was like 110. And then once I like went to college and my whole career back into Team USA and Olympics and that whole journey, I weighed 105. But like my highest was like 110 and then 105, like my whole rest of my your, gymnastics Your weight journey. was always really consistent too. Yes. Like so, college, you were always like... 110 like give or take one pound and then when you went back to Lee it's funny you were always 105 give or take like one pound yeah so anyway I just I don't know just I don't know that just for some reason has stuck with me it's bugged me I just don't like that when people like oh you just look healthier now I'm like (laughs) so you're saying I don't look healthy before I thought I looked healthy I mean I ate food it's not like I didn't eat but I also went gluten-free and I feel like that just helped me get more tone because I wasn't putting all that crap in my body, you know, so it was just better for me. So that probably made me look a little more lean. But 
I mean, when you go back and look at pictures, I do look like really lean and muscly and I skinny. Think you just look like an athlete. But yeah, but I was the highest level that I could be at, and I'm not going to yeah. be at that anymore. I mean, I could train like that if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. So anyway, it was kind of a rough transition for me for a little bit. And then I just feel like I got really lazy and down on myself that I, and I didn't even know where to start because I hadn't really like worked out. I didn't want to go to like Vasa or a workout gym where you just like walk in and like you see all these, all this equipment (laughs) that I don't even know how to use. So that's not going to motivate me or help me. So going to burn was finally something that I really liked. And it was a lot like gymnastics because a lot of it's like more your own body weight and just like little hand weights and you're doing all these different things. And it's a lot like gymnastics conditioning. And it was just like, wow, this actually works because I've gone and worked out and done other things and it didn't really feel like I was working out, you know? So burn like has really changed me and it's been really awesome. And I, and I, I just feel better. So even though I think I weigh like, I weighed like 118 after having a year off gymnastics. And now I think I weigh around like 116. So like a little bit less and I don't go to burn every single day. And I've been really busy recently with the new year and traveling for my meets and stuff so I haven't been on a schedule I would like to be on but anyway body image for a hot second after gymnastics I didn't think it would affect me but like I'd say six months in I was kind of like whoa but that happens to like every gymnast I feel like every gymnast kind of their body's transitioning trying to figure out what it's like like not working out so much and then I feel like after a while it's kind of like oh okay like this is normal life now and then it kind of figures its way back out but yeah, it was kind of rough. I was like, oh, I don't like looking like this. It's kind of sad. Even though I still looked fine, it just was like not lean and muscly. You know, I'm like, oh, I miss my abs or I miss my arm muscles, you know. Mm-hmm. It was kind of sad, but I feel good now. I feel better now because I'm working out more and moving. So That's good. I think the thing, too, about gymnastics is that, like, when you do gymnastics, you're using your whole body – and I'm sure I mean, your, your weight your weight in gymnastics probably affects you more than in most sports. And so I think that's kind of why it became such a thing. Because I'm just trying to think of, like, the sports I played growing up. You know, I don't know. We had guys all different sorts of body shapes and sizes. You know, like, obviously, if you're playing soccer, you need to be in pretty good shape cardio-wise. And so sco- soccer players tend to be skinnier. But, like, I don't know, like basketball. I mean, look at the NBA. Like, Zion Williamson is... I think he's the heaviest guy in the NBA and he's also shorter than me. And he's also like one of the like highest jumpers in the NBA. Mm. Like the guy's just insane, you know? And when he was going into the NBA, he was at Duke and so many people said like, Oh, he's too heavy. You know, like that's not sustainable. And I mean, he has, he's pretty injury prone, but you know, he's only been around for a few years, but he's, when he plays, he kills it. You know, I think there's, you know, there's also Kevin Durant, who's like seven feet tall and weighs <laughs> probably less than I do. Mm-hmm. You know, like there's like there's so many different body types. But then you look at sports like gymnastics. You guys are all pretty much short and, you know, similar body types. Mm-hmm. Or like Ninja, like Ninja Warrior. Like all the guys that I train with, you know, they're all pretty much like the same build. You know, and then there's me. I feel like your body just kind of builds the way the sport is too, which is weird. Yeah. So I can, I can see that being an issue, especially if you don't look like, you know, like. Right. But then there's so many athletes that you would never think would be like as good as they are, but they, they can do, that's just, you know, the way their body is and they make it work and they, they know how to figure it out. And it's like, it's just crazy to me that body image was, is, I mean, it still is such a thing, but. I mean, in gymnastics, that it used to be as bad as it was. Yeah. You know, like, some girls really had issues, you know? So it's just kind of, like, sad. Like, even I remember sitting at camp, eating food at camp, and there was times where we had, it was, like, the best meal we were always excited for. It was steak and french fries. (laughs) They were, like, the big, fat potato fries, you know? But we're, Mm -hmm. like, we get french fries at camp? Like, this is weird, you know? But, like, a lot of us would eat them would eat the fries and then you'd always see the one girls that were so scared of their coaches and so scared of Marta that they just wouldn't even touch the fries and they would get like one little piece of steak and it was just like 
you're not fueling your body. If you're not, you need to eat, you know, like you need protein, you need to get that energy, you need your body to recover. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, I, I mean, um, Marta had come a long way, like way, 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 way back. They used to like not eat anything. (laughs) And then my time of being at camp, at least it was better. And like the food was a lot better, but it was still sad to see that like we would even get all that good food and you know, girls were still too scared to eat it because their coaches were so hard on them. And I'm like, that's just stupid. Like if you're coming to a national team camp, I think your weight is fine. I was like, you wouldn't be here otherwise because Marta wouldn't think so, you know? So it's like, it's just sad that, I don't know. It is weird when you think about it because as a child, like I would see it, but like wouldn't really know. I don't know. I just didn't let my mind go there. You know, like I just was kind of like, well, that's sad that they have to do that. But you know, once again, I was just focusing on myself. So I just didn't, I don't know. I'm, I'm just glad that I didn't have to go through that. Like I'm glad yeah. Lisa wasn't that way. I mean, I remember being younger and most of the time, like going out and eating food for the meat, it was get a chicken Caesar salad. You should get a chicken Caesar. I'm like, dude, I can't have any more chicken Caesar salads. <laughs> then a little bit older I got cause time, the time started kind of changing. Like even Lisa was like, Oh, a chicken Caesar salad. That's good. I'm like, dude, I can't just live off a of lettuce with some little bit of chicken. Like I need to eat more. Like, let me get some, like a freaking baked potato and a steak. Like <laughs> maybe not right before the meat, but I don't know. It was definitely different. But then the older I got, it was like, oh, you can eat whatever you want. You know, your body, you're good. But there was a time period where gymnastics, it was, you know, just don't eat a lot or you know, chicken Caesar salad. And I'm like, dude, I can't live off a chicken Caesar salad, you know? So it's just crazy. Like kind of watching like how the times change, you know? Yeah. And so Lisa never forced anything on me, but like before the meet, you know, she'd be like, Oh, you should, you should get a chicken Caesar salad. You know, just, I think she was just trying to help me, but also food has come a long way. I feel like with sports too, like, I feel like every, every sport goes through it, you know? I mean, yeah. I guess, you probably don't know because you're not really an athlete, but. <laughs> Whoa, I'm an athlete. <laughs> Sorry, but. Um, let's look at some stats. So one study reports that at age 13, 53% of American girls are unhappy with their bodies. That's young. Mm-hmm. At age 13, I, well, was, I was playing video games. Well, and a coping mechanism when you're getting bullied is you eat a lot. And it's so, a coping mechanism for a lot of things, actually. Yeah, you're right. But, I mean, I could see, you know, at the age of 13, girls having issues and things like that and being unhappy with their bodies. And going back to social media, I hate talking about it, but social media <laughs> makes you feel that way. So yeah, I can get, you know, girls being in high school. Like, I even remember being in high school and then just seeing, like, even my nieces. They're not in high school yet, but just, like, the stuff they're going through. I'm like, dude, scary. And this grows to 78% by the time girls reach 17. Yeah. That's crazy. So that means the majority of... Well, and it's funny because in high school, like, all you care about is how you look. And it's so crazy because when you're in high school, everyone tells you, oh, when you get to college, like, you won't even be friends with these people anymore. You're going to move on. You're going to make new friends. You're going to go to school. You're going to live in sweats. So like high school doesn't matter, you know, they, they always say it. And I, and I, and it's hard when you're in that moment and you're, you know, 16 years old and you're in high school and you want to be like the prettiest girl in high school and you want to be popular and there's all the clicks and all the things. And it's just like, it's so crazy. Like, I'm glad I never really had time to do all that and be a part of something like that. Cause I wasn't at school long enough. I just was there, took my classes, hung out with my friends that I had and I'm glad I didn't have to have that. But seeing other people in high school go through that, I'm just like, that looks exhausting. You know, like, I'm so glad I don't, I don't know. So it is hard. It's like, if girls could just understand, like, high school doesn't matter. Like, just have fun. I don't know. It's way different for boys, I feel like. But for girls, it's like. <laughs> it's similar. Every, everything is just like about what group you're in, what sport you're in, what you do, how you look, how you dress every day. Like, it's just funny because you go to college and it's like, everyone's like bumming around all the athletes are in like workout gear and you're just like man everyone's right like high school is just it's just so weird that it's people created high school to be like that I just don't get it so my question is 
So 53% of American girls at age 13 are unhappy with their bodies, and it grows to 78% by the time they're 17. My question is, are they unhappy? Like, like are they doing things to change it, you know? Because there's a difference between being unhappy if you really are unhealthy or are you unhappy just because you're comparing yourself to unrealistic standards and you can't change it, you know? Because it's that. That's a problem. Um, definitely that. Cause that's how I would feel too sometimes, you know? Yeah. If you're oh, just that girl, you know, look at her outfits or, Oh, look at her hair. Or, you know, like we always try to compare ourselves to others. And in high school, it's like, that's, I feel like all girls think about is just comparing themselves to others. And it's sad. That's tough. Yeah. Cause the next one, nearly 50% of adults, 16 and up consider themselves overweight and nearly 61% want to lose weight. See, so as it means nearly half consider themselves overweight. My question is, are they really overweight or do they just think they are? You know, because if you are, and the, here's the thing too, it's like getting in shape, being healthy, the solution is really simple. The execution's difficult, but the solution is really simple. It's really just eat healthier, exercise. You know, easy to say, it's harder to do, but the point is it's pretty easy. But then it's, you know, some people too, some people are in great shape. And still struggle with mm-hmm. body image like which is crazy you'd think oh you know once you're in decent shape then you don't but no there's some people that are right they still think they're not yeah yeah and so th- that's that's where it gets really tough and i just i don't know i wish i could help i feel so bad for that that's a thing you know but well, it's, I, that's where i think it just circles back around with social media you know everyone portrays just comparing yourself yes yeah, just comparing yourself and i've talked about it with a lot of girls even at burn boot camp it's like you know us as women, you know, being married is so hard. Like there's so many trials and so many things you go through. And on social media, most of the time you just see people's good parts of the marriage. You don't see the parts that they're struggling with or that they need marriage counseling. And, you know, Jonas and I, we have our struggles. Like our marriage is nowhere near perfect. And it's just sad because I feel like a lot of times we don't really care to be vulnerable and show that side of ourselves You know, and so it's hard because when I was talking to these moms, they're like, we're just, you know, we're really struggling. It's really, really hard. And, you know, I think we need to go to a marriage counselor and this and this and that. And it's like they had to like take a step back for a minute because they literally thought there was something wrong with them because they go, oh, well, that couple on Instagram, their life seems so perfect. Their marriage is perfect. Their family's perfect. And it's like, wait, that's just what they're showing on social media. But then if you actually know the person and know what they're going through behind, you know, what we see on social media, they're struggling too. You know what I mean? So it's, it's definitely, I just think it has to do with social media and us trying to compare to other people that always show the good parts of life and not what they're actually struggling with, you know? So I'm like, maybe if there's more people being vulnerable, not saying you have to go there and tell your whole life story and, you know, you're going through this and that, but just to be more realistic, that life is hard I think a lot more people would feel better about them. You know what I mean? I don't know. Because I have a hard time too. I'm like, oh, they look so perfect. Oh, you know, this, like, and I feel like that's definitely more women do that than men. But it's just social media gets hard sometimes. It's just, it's how it is. It's a good thing and it's a bad thing. So I've just had to learn to like not let it get to me, but it's still hard. So right now, are you comfortable with your body right now? Are you happy where you're at? I mean, obviously I feel like I could be a little bit more in shape. I mean, I don't, my arms and my legs are fine with me. It's more just like my tummy. I just feel like was a little bit less like rolly right now. <laughs> like everything else I feel like is fine. Well, I, it's, it's, I do want to be a little bit more toned and a little bit more lean, but like honestly, like I it's hard like for you because you're used to your gymnast abs. I know, but hard to maintain. I've also been like, well, you know, trying to get pregnant and having a baby, I, it's fine. I don't need to be like at my peak right now anyway. Cause I'm like, I'll have to really get in my peak after I have my baby. So I'm like, I'll just try to stay at a good pace right now and then get working hard once I have a baby, you know? So yeah, I don't know. It's kind of hard. Cause I'm like, I don't want to be in like crazy good shape and then I get pregnant and I'm like oh you know that's true I don't know so I'm like as long as I can just stay good and then like work out when I'm pregnant and keep my body healthy so that way the transition's easier to come back from after having a baby but I don't know I'm okay I'm okay right now I mean definitely again it goes back 
like I'll go on social media sometimes and I'm like, how are these moms with four kids freaking ripped, have <laughs> abs, don't even look like they've had a child? I'm like, man, like I'm like, is that even real? But some people's bodies are just like that. And I'm like, it's again like comparing myself to them like oh why can't I have that body or uh you know it, it happens it's easy to let yourself get there it's hard I've had so many people tell me um that like, once that once you get pregnant that I'm gonna get, <laughs> get a, a dad bod yeah, I'm like you just Jonas you is like I that. will like, never you know, get yeah, that like, you just people that tell me that they just yeah, don't but they you're, just don't you're get also me like, just you're also just not like that though like you work out like three times a day I, that's what I say and they're like oh no like you'll still and it's mostly it's mostly it happening. people that I like friends that I know that have dad's bods that are trying to tell me that just because I feel like they they want me to be miserable <laughs> with them. I'm like, no, I'll just I'll just keep. Well, working and I feel out, like you know? you know, the older you get, your metabol metabolism gets worse. But I also it does feel slow like, down. yep, I just feel like you're still not. I don't know. Like, if you guys know Jonas, he is just naturally like really thin and. Well, I the funny thing is... I just is, don't think, no matter how hard you try, I just don't think you could put on the weight. <laughs> well, so the funny thing is, like, talking about body image is, like, I have the opposite problem most people have. It's hard for me to put on weight. Like, it was... When I first started working out, like, I hit it hard. And I was... I kid you, I was eating, like, 10,000 calories a day. Like, that's how I put on 30 pounds that summer. And then I kept it up. I was literally... So there's an acronym... For bodybuilders, it's go mad, mm. gallon of milk a day. Mm. I was literally drinking a Remember gallon of whole school, milk. in high school, guys would always do that. Carry around their like milk. You're thinking of well, their water jugs. I don't think anyone brought milk to school. Really? You're thinking of they'd use a milk jug with water. Oh, I guess. I don't know. No, but I would literally try and drink a gallon of whole milk every day. And I was. That sounds disgusting. One gram of protein per pound of body weight so upwards of 200 grams of protein a day and that was <laughs> that was like a full-time job like staying on top of that and I was working yeah, out like an hour rough. and a half and but what happened was so I slowly started gaining weight um by the time I left to be a missionary which was a year and like three months after I started working out I was 230 so I'd put on like 60 pounds yeah, but then on your mission, you lost a lot of weight because you were so that's the problem. biking and Yeah, because when I was a missionary, it was a lot of walking, a lot of biking. Didn't really have a whole lot of, like, gym access or gym time, you know, time to work out. And so by the time I came home, I was 200. And I've been able to maintain that sense. And there's been times, like right now, I'm not trying to gain more weight because I'm training for Ninja, you know, more weight hurts. But there's been times, like when I was in college, like when we met, I've been trying to, like, oh, you know, I just want to bulk up you know I just want to be bigger and it's hard like it's hard for me especially I don't know I don't I don't have the same appetite I had, had when I was in high school too I can't do gallon of milk a day anymore <laughs> like yeah so it's hard for me to gain weight which you know it's it's a good problem to have it's better than the alternative but that's the one thing is sometimes I because I, I still am like I'm totally fine with my body but sometimes I wish I had a little more yeah, you're always like, I'm going to take steroids. I'm going to take steroids. I'm like, no, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> I, that's a great idea. I mean, that no, would help. I, I know, I, Okay, but it's not a great idea. I always tell Jones, I'm like, you look good. You look fine well, the way you are. You don't see? It's an body I know. image. I'm, I'm fine with how I look, and I've worked really hard to get here. I'm just saying sometimes it would be nice if I could just put on, you know, and like I wouldn't want that forever, you know, because I think it's, it's way healthier because the more you weigh, the harder it is on like – all of your organs and everything. Mm -hmm. So like, I wouldn't want to do that forever, but like sometimes I just want to have like a year, like 2024, I just want to bulk up, you know, just like get real big. That's okay. That'd be cool. <laughs> what I'm do you okay. mean that's okay? You look good the way you are right now. I know, but I just want to try it out, I don't you know. know. I don't know how I feel about Like that. where I'm at right now, I think it's pretty sustainable for the rest of my life because I do a lot of cardio and do a lot of calisthenics and I weigh like, I'm like 220-ish. But some, I don't know, sometimes I just want to bulk up. Yeah, and we'll be sleeping and Jonas's arm will be on me. I'm like, out hurts, out <sighs> hurts, or his leg. I'm like, you're heavy, get off. <laughs> you're crushing me. Yeah, well, I literally weigh twice as much as you. Uh, okay, yeah, so, so. you don't need to be any bigger. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we'll see. For sure not. Well, the other thing, too, is I got into Spartan races. Yeah, you did. And that's a lot of cardio, and you don't really want to weigh a lot for that, you know. So now I'm like, well, shoot, because I'm. 
I said, I don't know if I can do the Spartan race this year because, yeah, I, so I signed up for the Spartan race January, like, 3rd. It was, like, beginning no, of the eight. year. Oh, oh, you signed up for it. I see. Sorry. And I was super pumped. Post about it on Instagram. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw it. I'm like, hey, I'm doing the Spartan race again because I did it last year and I loved it and I wanted to beat my time. And I got some friends to sign up with me, and it's in July. And so I started training and stuff. And then Michaela goes, oh, hey, by the way, um, one of my best friends is getting married that day in July, and we need to be in Nashville. So I'm like, nice. Yeah. So and I'm a bridesmaid, so Yeah, so I don't I don't know if I'll be doing the Spartan race this year. So Sad. Okay, two final questions. Sorry. Then the assumption. That's okay. right. I'll I'll figure it out. So how do you think the ideal body type has changed over time? I mean, I think it now, I mean, within the last couple of years it's I don't know how they say it, but however you look now to feel good in your own skin like you're you're beautiful the way you are you know yeah that's definitely been a more more recent movement right like before it was like you need to be stick skinny super skinny model like remember they'd be editing all the pictures and the faces so it's really cool now that no matter what body type you have you know you're beautiful in your own skin so i think it's really awesome i think that's cool there's a fine line though because you don't want to promote unhealthy habits or behaviors you know you don't want to tell someone that's you know killing themselves oh you're just fine the way you are you know if they're going to die of heart attack 20 years down the road or get diabetes you know so there's a fine line um i think we should promote you know being healthy those habits exercising regularly eating healthy staying away from processed foods and sugars you know Mm -hmm. Um, but also I do think it's important to not have unrealistic, you know, body standards or expectations and let people know, you know, Hey, a lot of people just have different body types, you know, like that's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. You know, you, some, one person could work out just as much as I do and, you know, it'd be harder for them to stay in shape. You know, everyone just, everyone just looks different. Well, like my mom has a thyroid problem, so it's hard for her to work out and stuff you know and then when you get older it gets harder so yeah always better to start when you're younger just to keep your body healthy so then you're not like my mom it's sad because she's having a lot of things starting to happen to her and she's kind of crumbling a little bit so it's I feel like to take care of it sooner than later is better but and final question what advice would you want to give anyone listening to this podcast who may be struggling with body image I know you already kind of answered it, but final thoughts, final advice. I don't know. I want to hear what you have to say. So I would say, so if you're listening to this podcast and you're struggling with body image, I think first things first, you already said it, like you should just learn to love yourself and just appreciate yourself Um, and that no one else's opinion really matters. So that's first, just appreciate yourself, you know, like yourself. Also, you're not alone. You're not, <laughs> yeah, you're not alone. Everybody I think struggles with it. Step two is if there are things that you should change, then you should change them. If, if it's inside your control, worry about it. If it's outside your control, don't worry about it. So if, it's, if you're comparing yourself to other people, just get rid of that. Just don't worry about it. But if you, know, if you would like to be in better shape, there's, Do something about it, yeah, yeah. there's actionable items you can take there. Um, and that's hard. That's hard to, you know... It's it's easy to say. Right. There's a lot that goes into it and it's hard. You know. So like baby steps. <laughs> but it's also it's you know, to identify is it are there things that I should change or am I just being influenced by mm-hmm. outside factors? You know. So it requires some introspection, but that's what I would say. If I mean, regardless of whether you should change things or not, ever I think everyone should just try and exercise and eat healthy. Mm-hmm. I think everyone will be happier you're healthier um but but if you are struggling with body image you know take a deep look inside yourself and figure out is it are you unhealthy or is it just are you comparing yourself to other people or to unrealistic standards or expectations and if you are you just gotta i don't know just not let it bother you not let it bother you Yeah. yeah just you do you what do you think i think that was great Couldn't have said it any better. I appreciate that.
<laughs> yeah, so so that's our advice. Again, we're, you know, we're not professionals, we're not experts, but that's what I'd say. I think that's the most important thing is just just you do you, you be healthy, be happy, and just live life. The uh, assumption, this is an interesting one. You can say it this week if you want. So today's assumption is gymnastics has really shaped Michaela as a person in a lot of good ways. Agree. I'd agree. Yeah. I think there's good and a little bit of bad. I think you'd agree with that too. Yeah. I think it's mostly good. I mean, I think good, a but... lot of good too is just from having Jonas in my life. That's nice. Through of you. my gymnastics career. I appreciate that. I think I think it's I think actually I think you'll agree with this too, but you've developed some good habits that when you when you retired from gymnastics, I think you kind of dropped <laughs> oh, no. like you know, like, because when you retired, you were like, I'm done. Like, I'm not even going to go back mm-hmm. to another gym. Like, I just need a break. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to do anything gymnastics wise. You, like, didn't follow the sport. Like, you spent a few months where you were just out of it. I think you also, like, dropped some of the good habits you learned from gymnastics. And so it's been cool to see you pick it back up, you know, like. But the, there's also so many habits from gymnastics that. Or awesome that I'll have forever, you know, which... Just, like, hard work, right. you know, having a goal and going for it, you know, discipline, right? Like, gymnastics is one of the most, like, one of the sports where you have to have the most discipline, you know? Um, striving for perfection can be good and bad, but I think it's mostly good, you know? There's a lot of things like that that I think you've kept with you. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> what, anything else you want to say? Better you hear agree? this yeah. more often. <laughs> <laughs> you you agree with that? I agree with that. Cool. I mean, obviously, because of gymnastics, that's it's obviously shaped me into who I am. You know, basically, was my life for twenty years. So, yep. pretty crazy. Anyway, I guess that was a good assumption to close out the topic for today. But that once again, you know, we're not we're not pros at this stuff, but we're just glad that we're here to be able to talk about it and we know that a lot of people go through this I go through it myself on a daily so it it does get hard at times and I always try to look at the positives and the greater and bigger picture in life so anyway thank you guys so much for listening for tuning in again we always appreciate you guys this podcast wouldn't be here without your love and support and we just hope that you continue to be here for us and to get to know us And I guess we can wrap it up. See you next Friday. (laughs) Bye, guys.